there everybody so uh bought a new pentax <laughs> pentax 67 pentax 67 takes 120 roll film which is that without a focus i'll hold it over here it looks like that okay and uh what you need to understand about roll film medium format roll film is all the formats for medium format for example it's 645 it's 66 it's 67 so here's my handy teaching aid. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can see over here, this is 645. And then if the camera stretches the film out a little further, it can make it 66. And if you have a camera that does it a little bit differently, you get a 67. That's what this camera is. A Hasselblad is a 66 square. And like the Pentax 645 would be a 645 camera. What's interesting about this, so it's all the same film. It just depends on how big the camera makes the negative on the film. Depend, that's why you have different formats for medium format. You know, if you're familiar with medium format, you understand that. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to assume anybody is. What you need to understand about this is, uh, is the square. And you need to put the Hasselblad into perspective. Uh, Hasselblads have a reputation for being as sharp as six by sevens, but that's only when you're printing square. If you crop a Hasselblad to a rectangle, it's a 645 camera. So you can either look at that as the best of both worlds or the worst of both, both worlds. Um, depends on how you look at it. The Hasselblad's great if you shoot square. It's, um, it's a 6x6 six six if you want, it's a 6x645 six six if you want rectangles. So keep that in mind. If you crop a Hasselblad to an 8x10, it's not going to be as sharp as a Pentax 6.7. So there's that, okay. It's gonna be as sharp as a Pentax 645. So, okay, there's my 120 film tutorial in a nutshell. So that explains 120 film hopefully pretty clearly and pretty concisely. Now, why did I get a Pentax 67? Well, there's a number of reasons. I love the 4x5 and the 4x5 can only do what the 4x5 can do. And that's great, but there are times when um, you know, a 4x5 is not the, the most practical camera to take out there. And the thing about the Pentax 67, I have a long history with Pentax 67. I bought my first Pentax 67 brand new probably in 1990 something. Okay. And, um, and so I'm very familiar with the system. And what's interesting about that is some of the ideas that are being floated out there on the internet by newcomers to film, young kids who, who, who didn't grow up with film, um, you know, there's some myths in this system that are just really interesting. Um, you know, hey, if you know, you know, if you don't, you don't, you kind of had to have been there and I was, so there it is. Um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. First of all, the, so the thing about the 6.7 over the 4x5, first of all, the 6.7 is like, you know, the 4x5 is like a horse and buggy compared to a Model T uh, Ford, you know, and that's where the 6.7 is, you know, whereas um, these new modern digital cameras are more like spaceships, but, but we won't go there. So, um, so, you know, when you commit to 4x5, when you get to a Pentax 6.7, it's really stark how all the trade-offs of automation are there, yet the benefits are there as well. So first of all, you've, you've got the benefit of roll film, okay? And uh, what that means is you get 10 frames per roll, which you don't have to change your film holders all the time. So if it's snowing or if it's a light rain or something like that, um, your Pentax 6.7 is a better choice, uh, you know? And what's really interesting is the 6.7 negative um, kind of gives you what the four, I mean, it's close, close to four by five in terms of quality. There's no question about that. So particularly when it comes to color, you know, um, I, I've got some scans from some 6.7 uh, chromes from Fuji Valdia that are just absolutely stunning. Some of the highest quality photographs I've ever seen. So yeah, four by five is better. There's no question about it, but there are times when four by five can't get the shot and a Pentax 6.7 could. And so the trade-off of a little bit of film real estate for the convenience of the automation and the viewfinder and the roll film, et cetera, et cetera. So that's where we're at. 
Now let's talk about weight, because this was really interesting. The Pentax 6.7 is a honker of a camera. You know, you can see it. It actually comes in with the 90 millimeter lens, which is my preferred lens choice for landscapes and does great portraits as well. Um, on a side note, the really cool thing about 6.7 is the uh, focal lengths of the lenses are real easy to compute in terms of 35 millimeter terms, just divide by two. So a 90 millimeter lens is about approximately equal to a 45 millimeter lens in 35 millimeter. So your 90 is going to be your normal lens. All right, let's go back to weight. So the Pentax 6.7 comes in at 5.3 ounces or 2.4 kilograms. Okay, that's heavy. There's no question about that. But let's compare it to the 4x5. So I would normally go out with 12 film holders in two pouches like this, okay? So in these two pouches are 12 film holders, which is 24 exposures. And what I would normally go out with would be 12 black and whites and 12 colors, six Ektar, six Provia, you know, um, depends on what I'm shooting, depends on what I've got loaded. So here they are, okay? And these are loaded, ready to go. This is six FP4+, plus. this is six Ektar and six Provia. Okay, so there's 24 exposures in two film holders. And in four by five, film holders is what's killed. It's the film that, that the weight of the film holders that it would kill you. These two pouches, which I would normally bring with me, is five pounds, 12 ounces, or 2.6 kilograms. So right away, if I, right, there is my 6.7. So if I ditch these film holders, which I don't need to bring with me for the 6.7, the 6.7 is lighter than 24 exposures. Now, let's go a step further. That was 24 exposures. Here's 30 exposures in medium format film on a 6.7, three rolls of film. This weighs 2.7 ounces or 78 grams. So the 6 and, and with the film holders, I don't even have a camera or lenses, okay? So I can go out with the 6.7 and three rolls of film and a lens for the same weight as just the two film holders for four by five. That's amazing. So the, you know, so right there, you, you can see the, the, a roll of 120 film weighs like uh, less than an ounce and that's for 10 exposures, which is great. Now the, the, the knock on effect also um, uh, can be attributed to, to, um, to cost as well. So, for a, for a 20 sheet box of Fuji Provia, right now on B&H, it's about 90 bucks. That's about $5 a sheet, okay? And it's $6 to have it processed. And I'm not gonna include shipping because shipping would be the same for medium format or four by five. So, um, so $5 a sheet, $6 for, uh, for um, processing. That's $11 an exposure. In medium format, a roll of uh, pro, uh, uh, a five pack of Fuji Velvia, and that's another thing, they still sell Velvia in one, Velvia 50 in 120 in the United States. Fuji's still importing it for now. So a five pack, uh, 50 exposures is about 50 bucks. Okay, I'm looking at my notes over here. So it's about 50 bucks. So that's a buck an exposure and then 1350 to have it processed. So we're looking at, you know, maybe $2 to 250 in exposure versus $11 in exposure. So the cost savings is significant as well. Um, of course, that's meaningless if the quality isn't there. And you, six, seven, the quality is there. So there's no question about that. Um, four by five is better and four by five is more fun and four by five is more of a challenge. And I will continue to use my four by five every chance I get, but there are situations where, you know, there are shots to be made that a four by five isn't practical for, and the six, seven would be. Let's talk about, so, uh, Nico's photography show, which I really appreciate. He did a buyer's guide on the Pentax six, seven. And there are four variations of the Pentax 6.7. There's the original 6.7 without mirror lockup. Personally, you know, unless you're 
going to be doing a lot of street photography with the 6.7. Like for, for landscapes, the mirror lockup's really important. You do what you want. You can get the non-mirror lockup bodies now for about 500 bucks. I personally wouldn't. Okay. Then there's the 6x7, 6x7, and it says so on the corner here. And then the uh, last model of the 6.7 before they went to the 6.7.2 was just the 6.7. Um, so this is the most recent one of the old style bodies. And then there's the 6.7.2. All of the old style bodies, not the 6.7.2, are more reliable. And there's, they're more, less complex, there's less electronics in them, and they do fundamentally the same thing. Okay, the images that you're going to get out of a 672 are going to be equal in terms of image quality to the exactly the same actually to the images you're going to get out of an older 67 model or 6x7 model. Um, I would definitely get one with the mirror lockup and I would try to get the, the latest incantation, which is the 67, which is what I got. Um, Nico's photography show said something very strange and i'm sure he was corrected on it because he made this a long time ago um, he said when you change lenses you have to do something with the prism and he was almost right what it what the the thing with the prism on the six seven is there's a let me pop this off here and i'll show you this is the metered prism there's a slider here on the prism that tells the camera and tells the meter it's a connection between the lens and the prism that uh, tells the prism with the meter in it what aperture you're at so the meter can meter. Okay, so this slider that, that does that, okay, inside the body here, there's, it's chain driven, which will never break unless you force it and break it. And if you force it and break it, then you're, you're screwed. It's an expensive repair. But if you don't force it and break it, it'll, it, it's chain driven. It'll never break. These cameras, these older models, not the 672, are, as somebody said, tough as old boots. And yeah, they are really stout cameras. They, they made the linkage uh, chain. So, um, however, if you take the prism, so the, the, there is an order to this, and that's what Nico was talking about, um, but he almost got it right. You got to put the prism on first and it clicks in. I hope you heard that. And then you put the lens on. Okay. And then what that does is it keys the prism to the lens. Okay. So you can take the lens off and put another lens on. And I've got some on order because I just wanted to make sure the body worked before I ordered a bunch of lenses. And so um, you can take the, the lens off and put a different lens on or the same lens on, no problem. But what you can't do is take, if you take the prism off, and I'll do it just to show you, you take the prism off, okay? Now, this is keyed for this lens. If you take the prism off on a Pentax 6.7, you must take the lens off and then put the prism back on. And then you have no worries at all and nothing will ever break, hopefully. And you're good to go. Okay, I hope that made sense. And that leads me to another thing. So some of the myths surrounding some of these lenses. What's up with the 10524? Okay, it's more expensive than the 928, which makes no sense to me whatsoever because back in the day, when this system was hot, you know, or new, I should say, when you could buy it new, the 90 was the preferred lens. The 105 actually had a reputation for not being the best Pentax 6.7 lens. It was kind of considered the kit lens. It was the one you bought with the body because it was the cheapest. Well, I, YouTube has kind of turned that around now. Don't get me wrong. The 105, there, there is no bad Pentax 6.7 lens, except for maybe some of the ones... I don't know about the ones made like between 1969 and 1980. Okay, I, I'm not familiar with that whole range. There's no need to go there. I got into the system later than that. And now, of course, you can buy any lens you want. And they're all kind of about the same price, sort of. So, um, so I'm talking about the, the more, more recent lenses. 
The 105 was considered the kit lens. It's still a great lens, don't get me wrong. But the 90 was preferred. It was more expensive and it was actually considered sharper and a better lens. I think what's happening is people aren't familiar with 6.7 or film and they get a 6.7 and it comes with the 105 and they take some pictures with it and the format and the quality just absolutely blows them away because they're not used to that. If you like the 105, don't get me wrong, I would have a 105 if I did portraits, okay? That's a good portrait lens. Um, for landscapes, for a, for, a, for a normal lens, I think the 90 is better, but that's just me. It's your, if you have the 105 or the 90, really doesn't make any difference. But what does make a difference is the 105 is more expensive now and the 90 is cheaper. And I, I, that's amazing to me. I, I kind of shake my head and go, what happened there? I mean, it, it's really weird. Um, there are some lenses that were made right at the end of uh, Pentax's life when, and let's be honest, Pentax really did go out of business, okay? The modern Pentax is not what Pentax was in lights whenever they went out of business, which was when the, uh, the last 672 stopped production. Um, I think it was about 2002 or so, something like that. I'm guessing on that, but pretty close. And th that's when Pentax really went out of business, okay? Um, so the lenses that they made towards the end of Pentax's life and the end of the Pentax 6.7, which was the last 6.7, which was the 6.7.2, like the 75 F2.8, that lens is going for three grand because it's so scarce. It's a great lens, don't get me wrong, but you're paying the scarcity premium, premium there, okay? And the zooms, they made some zooms for this thing and they're, first of all, they're extremely rare and they're very expensive. So, and then on the other hand, you've got lenses that are absolutely outstanding that are super cheap. I saw a review of uh, one guy was talking about his Pentax 6.7 and he didn't like the 200 millimeter F4. It's one of the sharpest lenses in the system. Maybe he was trying to hand hold it or something. You know, yeah, you know, even at a thousandth of a second, I don't know. Uh, it's definitely a tripod lens and it's, I used it for landscapes and I've got one on order. It was a go-to lens for this system for me. It is one of the sharpest lenses. I, I got an absolutely mint one off of eBay for like 140 bucks with, including shipping. That's insane. I almost got one for under a hundred dollars that was mint, but it would had already sold. That's insane. That, that's ridiculous. They're giving those away. And the, one of the sharpest lenses in the system is the 135 millimeter F4 macro. You can get a mint copy uh, for 150 bucks, including shipping. That's amazing. Um, the 55 F4 and the 45 F4 are great. I decided to go with the 55 F4 just because I wanted the filter thread uh, the 77 millimeter, the 45 millimeter has an 82 millimeter filter thread. I'll probably end up picking up the 45 also. I think the 45 goes for about 500 and I paid about $350 for a 50, for a mint 55. Amazing prices. They're giving these lenses away. Um, I will tell you that the prices in the past year or two have actually gone up. So that's amazing. And I think they're going to continue to go up as more people discover the joys and the quality of film. Um, so that's why I kind of wanted to get a 6.7 before the music stopped and before they got prohibitively expensive. The Hasselblads have already done that. Um, the Hasselblad that I had last year, I couldn't afford to, I wouldn't pay that kind of money for it today. Uh, it's gone up by at least 500 to a thousand dollars from what I paid for it last year. Incredible, amazing times. I think people are realizing like these are great cameras and as long as the film's still going to continue to be made, they're going to be great cameras. And, um, and produce outstanding results that are not digital. And, uh, and it's a finite quantity. This camera will never be made again. Hasselblads will never be made again. The factories are shut down. The people who know how to make them are gone. I mean, that's just where, where it is, you know. And this technology is, you know, and so that leads me to another thing. I prefer the 6.7 over the 6.7 too, only from the standpoint of reliability. Um, 
There are people that are saying that the 672s, first of all, they're expensive. They're like three grand for a decent quality, you know, a decent condition body. But also if it does break, they're kind of hard to get repaired. A lot of electron, a lot of people won't touch them. A lot of electronics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've heard that the uh, gearing mechanism, one of the things, one of the things about a 6.7 is the wind mechanism. You've got to be really gentle with it and really precise with your winding because this is a weak area. Now, in here is all helical, what is they call it, Heli helical cut gears that are brass and solid. I mean, the camera is tough as old boots. Um, I'm not sure that the same can be said for the 6.7.2 because there's a lot of reports of the wind mechanisms on the 6.7.2s breaking. I'm just going to guess that maybe they went to some nylon gears or plastic gears or something. So, you know, um, the automation's awesome. I'd love to have that meter or the spot meter built into the camera. It'd be fantastic. But I don't want to pay the money and I've got a spot meter and I want the reliability. Um, the one downside to this camera is it takes this little tiny uh, the L544 batteries. You can get the um, uh, L... 28 is a Duracell battery. It's a lithium battery. In normal conditions, like, like an alkaline battery in this camera lasts six months. But if it gets cold, it dies. So I'm hoping that the lithium batteries last a little bit longer. I used to have a deal that plugged into the bottom that had a wire that came out that you could put the battery in your pocket. That was pretty cool. I don't think I'll ever find another one of those. There's probably five of those ever made. It was a Pentax accessory. Um, but for shooting in cold weather, but now, nah, but that was back when we didn't have lithium batteries. So I'm hoping that the little lithium six volt, when I want to go out and photograph, I love to photograph on the snow with this camera. That'd be so cool. So, um, so I'm hoping that that will work. Um, all right. What else do we have for you? Let's see. Um, I think that's it. I think I covered everything and, um, I have a long history with this camera and I really enjoy it. Uh, coming from a 35 millimeter or a digital full frame or something like that, even a big honking professional digital full frame, uh, this camera is going to seem like, you know, a, a box of rocks in terms of the weight. Coming from 4x5, it, it, it all depends on your perspective. Coming from 4x5, the automation and the convenience of having roll film and the weight is the, you know, the weight is of the camera is equal to 12 film holders. You know, yeah, it's it's a huge, it's just another, uh, what do they say, arrow in your quiver. And so that's what it is for me. Um, the Most of the quality of 4x5 with the convenience of 35, like a 35 millimeter camera in terms of you just throw the film in there and you just wind. And, you know, what's really cool about this, if you're not sure about your exposure, you can bracket, um, things like that. Now you can do all that in 4x5, but, you know, if I bracket three frames in, on, on 4x5 Velvia, First of all, it's hard to get. And second of all, I just spent $35, which, you know, so you, you, you're not going to be doing that, okay, <laughs> too often. Uh, it'd have to be a really compelling scene for me to be throwing film at it like that. But with the 6.7, you know, it's uh, two bucks a shot. You don't mind so much. You know, you only spent six bucks for bracketing three frames instead of 30. So as you can tell, I'm excited about that. I also love black and white with this camera. Um, so yeah, the only downside is if I put a roll of black and white in, I got to shoot 10 frames if we're going to switch over to color. So that's, you know, the good news is black and white film is even less expensive. It's like, I don't know, I didn't look it up, but it's cheaper than, than color and I can process it myself. So there's no processing fee. So it's significantly cheaper. So that's cool. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, if you're into the Pentax 6.7 or you're interested in the Pentax 6.7, I hope you found this talk helpful. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and I appreciate it. Have a great one. We'll catch you guys later and see you out there. Bye.